Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are creating the ultimate beginner's guide to city skylines by creating the city of Trattoria. And in the previous episode, we introduced the Green Cities DLC, and we actually covered almost everything in that DLC in one episode. And I'm, I'm pretty thankful for that because we've got some issues. Uh, if you look at this, we have traffic. <laughs> we have significant traffic, and it's been pointed out in the comments why this is occurring. And uh, it was kind of a boneheaded mo move of me not to recognize the problem. We've created a giant cul-de-sac over here. <laughs> so this whole area, Monument Circle, our new five-star park, Emerson Square, all of this right here is one cul-de-sac. Everything funnels into this collector. That's a problem. This collector is functioning as an arterial and it's it's breaking down. So if we take a look at this, you know, 83%, not terrible. Some of the traffic due to this area developing but reasonably, we need another roadway into this area, which is ironic because we're working on green cities right now. <laughs> so I know, I, the irony is not lost on me. That said, it's it's necessary. And uh, truthfully, one of the arguments that's made about relieving traffic congestion for the sake of green cities is that idling uh, releases a, a ton of emissions into the air. So I'll let you be the, the judge on, on how you feel about that, but that's an argument that gets made. That said, we are going to do something about this. And what we are going to do is begin another highway. So the highway is going to stretch basically from the highway here all the way across. And it's going to provide some access to downtown and to this area over here. We've got a, a bunch of limitations here and it's gonna make this a very interesting build. So we've got Lee Hawkins, more nature, less traffic park, and we are going to need to bring traffic through his park. <laughs> we also have this rail line that we so carefully placed in the previous episodes that uh, now, is in, now is in the way. And then the biggest limitation is we're gonna to need to connect right here and we don't have this tile. So we're gonna to need to work on that. And we are still gonna do some more with the DLC. We have the Central Park and I want to connect that in to this area over here. And we're gonna fill in this area right here with more Green Cities neighborhoods. And get some water pipes under the road where they belong. Pre-installing infrastructure is not necessarily the height of realism, but we're going for it today. We're going for it. Okay, just had to make sure that we are during uh, we were doing this during the day. We were about to transition to night. That was a problem. Okay, so I want this highway to be a sunken highway. I think that we're gonna call a mulligan on this collector right here, not because it's a bad spot for a collector, but because we need a highway. So we are going to do even more extreme terraforming here. It's a highway, so as a highway, we would expect that uh, whatever is needed. To, to happen to make this a smooth collection connection is done so i i'm gonna place this now we're gonna design the highway using dirt roads which i i, I know might be controversial but it's what i do uh, i do this because i can make lots of mistakes and not waste money so uh, i'm gonna do this why don't we just keep it running uh you know sometimes i like to pause it there's, there's no real need to pause it in fact i'm gonna start with this little segment here we're going to build that green neighborhood and then we'll come back to this so that we can reach our population milestone while we are still doing this so let's get this road started though so what i'm going to do i'm going to make sure all my snap twos are on and then i want to make sure that i'm leaving enough space to upgrade these in the future if necessary so i've given just enough space so this is the perfect distance between these roads so I'm gonna leave this for just a moment. We've got this area and we know that we're gonna be building in here. So let's just take care of that right away. Um, there's, the grid breaks down at this point. There's not really much of a grid and that's completely fine. Or there's not a there's not a, a well-defined grid. I would call this a very tight grid. We are still gonna maintain some griddedness through here, uh, but it's gonna be a very organic grid that, that allows us to Know, take advantage of the space, have some bigger lots, and not be constrained by the grid. So this will open up the opportunity if we get some bigger buildings to put in here in the future, maybe we can do that, or it can just be a lower density area and we can uh, 
except that uh, that is the area that we're building. <laughs> so and I'm just trying to break these blocks up a little bit. They're pretty big, which is going to be a problem for us if we want to maximize our, our developable land here, which to a certain extent, I think that we do. So this will be very irregular. I know that th some of these blocks might trigger some folks, but I, I do think that it makes some sense and it'll allow us to, to bring in some additional greenery into the area and make this feel just a little bit more natural than some of the other areas. I would imagine that an area like this, this close to downtown would be immensely popular. So let's look at our districts and we'll create a green district over here. We have one right here, but maybe we'll make it just slightly different. There we go. So now that we have this, we need to set our policies. We are gonna set our, our, our self-sufficient buildings and we will also have organic and local produce in here. Uh, we could really mix it up. We could say it's self-sufficient buildings and, you know, leisure, <laughs> whatever. But this is a pretty big area. And I, I do think that uh, we, we want some synergy between these uses. I'm going to extend some of the higher density uses out here. And one thing that we might want to do since we're backing off, rather than zoning every single uh, parcel over here, we could you know, separate things. The irregular block size makes that really difficult. I think that's easier to do when things are squared up. So maybe maybe we'll just not do that here, but it's certainly a consideration. And, and, and in the future, I think I want to do that in more areas. I am going to keep it pretty dense back here, though. And I'm, I'm going to include a couple of nodes for commercial, but not too many. I'm going to basically identify key corridors. So rather than, you know, individual blocks that have a node of, of, of commercial, we'll just have corridors of commercial through here and finish it up like that. Let's make sure we have water pipes because I know that there's one area. And then I want to look at the policies here. Now this is a green area, so maybe we will have a power and a water utilization policy just for this area. And we will have electric cars, but we won't com ban combustion vehicles here. So that was one of the things that I saw in the comments that was hypothesized about Emerson Square that perhaps the reason that there were so many issues here uh, is, is that the combustion engine ban here is making it impossible for combustion vehicles to come down this road. We're going to test that. And the way that we're going to test that is we're just going to back this off from this road. And I'm very curious to see how this works. Because right now you see that there is only a moderate amount of traffic through here. I think part of that is that this does not make a direct connection down to this collector. So it's not the most direct route, but maybe it is this policy. Maybe this policy is creating an issue here. Another way to test it would be to actually take this policy and we could just send it right there and see what this does. So if the hypothesis is correct, this will no longer have traffic or not nearly as much and that traffic will come over here. And interestingly, it looks like the exact opposite of it is happening. That said, turn up our speed and see if anything changes. So after letting this run for a few minutes, it is very clear that the commenter was correct. This is wild. I would have never guessed that the result would be this extreme. It almost makes me wonder if we were to just ban combustion vehicles altogether, <laughs> if, if that would accomplish the goals of making this a green neighborhood. So I'm going to just pull this over here and I want to see if it has a detrimental impact to this neighborhood. Now it should, <laughs> it really should. Uh, but but we're not we're not sure of that. So let's let's give it a go. Well, this is interesting. I I think that it it more or less has done what after the last test I would expect to happen, which is uh, we 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 don't really have a lot of traffic over here. Now the the concern I have is what are all these folks doing? It's not like we have a. I mean, we do have transit. So let's see. As I click on that, <laughs> we saw the number jump 
from 267 to 599 for passengers here at the metro station. So that was that's that wow. That's pretty outrageous. Let's take a look at our public transport line. So this I believe is Metro Line 9. It's the green line. We need to fix that. Let's make that we'll make that the yellow line. And what we can see is now we have a ton of demand to get back and forth across the bay. So we can crank this up because we need to get these passengers back and forth. This is actually, this is interesting. This is basically a transport, a, 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 a travel demand management or transportation demand management uh, program. Had that policy, the combustion engine ban. It's not, I mean, that's not how it works in real life, <laughs> but um, I guess it could. I mean, uh, depending on where you are, I think London has a, a program where they, it's not combustion engine ban, but th they have a program where you're unable to to drive on certain days of the week if your license plate it has a certain, is odd or even or something along those lines. Uh, congestion management. Uh, so there, there are, 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 that's certainly something you could do and that would force more people onto public transfer, transit. So it's working well from that perspective. And it's really boosting up our transit ridership, particularly on this line. And now we've kind of got to look at the rest of our lines too, because we're getting people away from here. You could probably use one more vehicle, although it's 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 going back and forth. So maybe it's not the end of the world, but one more would probably help a lot. Okay, and now I want to look at the other lines as well. So let's look at that blue line that feeds into this. And we've got the same thing, bottlenecks on either end. And the real cause of that is that we have two, <laughs> we only have two vehicles. We're going to take this to five as well. Uh, we'll, we'll think of these as being interlined. I'd love to actually interline them and have it be one route. My fear is that these serve different purposes and that's a very long line. In reality, that wouldn't, that wouldn't matter. Uh, but in the game it does. So interlining is basically where you take one transit vehicle and the number or the route changes at a stop or a particular point and it becomes another route. And you can do this so that you, you have one bus or one uh, subway uh, cart that's, that's, that's operating two routes and uh, able to make a, a clean pass. This is really beneficial for passengers because then they don't have to transfer. They can just sit in the same vehicle. Their Route 15 becomes the Route 16 and they're on their way to their destination. Difficult to do that in the game. Honestly, it's, it's a difficult thing to do in reality. <laughs> so it's not surprising to me at all that it's not in the game because it's just one of those. I mean, you really got to love transit <laughs> to, to, to get into interlining. So this is a this is a really tricky route. I think it's going to get better over time. Um, we're seeing the numbers improve, but we're forcing a lot of people onto transit now. So the next issue that we could have is this blue line. So we'll call this the, the Meadow District. We'll make that green. Now, I'm afraid to even look at this one. It's OK. OK, we've got like a couple of we've got a couple of bad stops. Ooh. Yeah, this right here is is bad. This is bad news bears right here. Uh, I don't know what this tells me. When I see these kinds of numbers, it means that our buses aren't big enough. And we we don't really have an option to, to improve this. I could throw more buses at this. I don't know that it's going to help. Uh, that's the only option I have right now. We're going to double it. It's going to cause traffic jams. Uh, I guarantee it. We already see that along the route. There's there's some heavy traffic in this area. We're going to have bus bunching, which you can already see right here. Got bus, bus, car, car, bus, bus. <laughs> oh boy, if only there was a way to fix that. Uh, you know, the articulated bus would be very nice right here because this is just, that's unacceptable. That's unacceptable. Um, so we, we probably now that we have done a bit of work here, we could probably get away with not building the highway, but that wouldn't be any fun. So we're going to build the highway anyway. 
And I think it's going to be a, a, a pretty big benefit to this area, particularly for the freight. So let's get to it. And now that I think about it, we're actually going to need to be able to get over this road here. We could have an interchange here instead of trying to, uh, to go under this or something. We'll go over it and eventually create an interstate or inter interchange. So, all right, let's go ahead. We'll turn our road guidelines on. We're going to build this out and this is nice and level. And that's exactly what we want. We can, we made some modifications to this road before, and I think we're going to take them back. So I am going to call a mulligan on this road and we are going to do some pretty significant work here. We just broke that. That stinks. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think we kind of had to. And we're going to take out this road as well because it's problematic. So this is where right-of-way reservation would be really nice in the game. It's not really a, a concept in the game. And it's it really hurts sometimes. <laughs> so, uh, right-of-way reservation is basically the, the act of making sure that you have enough width to build the road that you think you might need in the future. So that you can do that somewhat in the game by building a large avenue with grass, you could go along here. And now you've reserved enough space so that if in the future you need to expand this road, you can. However, it's, it's imperfect in that it still looks at this as a collector, not a local road. And it makes this really wide road, which uh, from a, from a planning perspective, I don't like because it means that every single junction that you have to get across is that much wider for pedestrians. It's just not ideal. It's just not ideal. So that is one ugly junction. I would not be excited to, to construct this, but I would be even less excited about this, which is the craziness happening in front of the train station. We're going to fix that real quick. And the way that we're going to fix it is to basically back this out and then we'll construct our local road here and we will turn this around using our curved road tool which will help us make a very nice junction with this road using our road guidelines there we go perfect curved road and now we have this extension here and we're going to take this let's turn on our terrain heights to make sure that we are choosing the best path and then we'll use our curved road tool to make a perfect connection with our existing collector. And we'll need to upgrade this. I probably should have just built this as a bike road, a, bike, a road with bike lanes to start out with, but I didn't. <laughs> so we'll need to, to make those upgrades now. Not the end of the world. And at least this partially makes up for calling a mulligan on that road right there. There we go. So we've still got a problem here. We've got to get this fixed. So I use the guideline from this road to create the junction here. And I'm going to finish the loop. And then I want to do a little bit of vanilla traffic management on here. We do not need more junctions than are actually warranted. And that is one thing the game is pretty terrible about. Now we could go ahead and prioritize this road. And that would make putting these junctions on a little bit easier. I always forget to do that. That should remember it more because it's very helpful. And then here, this road isn't doing anything right now. So I'm going to prioritize this movement. I need to remember this in the future. Otherwise, we're going to have some traffic problems. And then you see that there are just a couple spots around here where I added roads. And we never added stop signs. So it's never a bad idea to go back and check your work because you might be surprised. And it looks like this road is finally functioning now without that com with that combustion engine van. We're all getting hot dog vehicles and uh, and bug spray vans. So, <laughs> and I guess is that hers? Yes. All right, we're uh, we're we're making progress. So, whew. this part is going to be nerve wracking. We've got to make some decisions, and none of them are going to be good. So let's take our heights down. We're going to pull this up. So five looks like it's about the magic height to get this straight across. And one of the things I hate about using the dirt roads is that you can end up in some instances where the pillar is just bigger. 
and as a result it won't fit so now I had to upgrade this for that one junction to make it work. This kind of is what it is. I'm going to try to get my pillars lined up again so that's why I have this short segment here then we'll get across the road uh, the, 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 the train tracks here. So that's pretty flat we've got we've got what appears to be a slight dip here I think the dip is happening right away so we'll need to pull this up just one and then get this across interestingly now this one looks better than this other one and I'm wondering if that's just yeah that was just well it's not perfect, but we're not going to let perfect be the enemy of good. That's pretty darn good. So at this point, we've got a significant issue in this. This is in the way. There's no way around this. We're going to have to call a mulligan. <laughs> I know that's the height of realism. So we are going to sync this. I want to start over here because this is our most constrained part of this entire roadway. And that is not going to be good enough to give us ourselves the ability to upgrade in the future. Let's back this out. And you can already see the problem that we're going to have. Hmm. Not only do we not look at our heights, which is a, a, another problem. And you see that this is on a slope. Yeah, we've got, we've got issues. So let's go ahead. We'll blast this away. And I want to level a pad for this. Now we're just about to pass our population threshold, which is great because we've got a lot of work to do with this highway. Now, when you're building a highway, never feel bad about terraforming. In fact, if you're not terraforming, you're doing something wrong. With a highway, they're going to spend, the, the D, Department of Transportation is gonna spend any amount of money necessary to make the road flat for freight vehicles. So you should be thinking about freight when you're building highways because that's what the Department of Transportation is thinking about. So that is that is my mindset whenever I build a highway. Now we've got a metro line that's causing problems. It's it's going to make it difficult too because I, 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 I'm almost thinking that the only way that we can approach this is to go underground. And that is going to be trouble for us. So I'm using the curved road tool in the first one and then we're going to use the freeform tool and go down the same number. I went down three on this one so that we are able to line things up. Now for the next one, we are going to use the curved road tool because we can use our guidelines then. Ooh, that is not pretty. So it doesn't matter how many times you've done this. Some infrastructure projects are just always going to be a challenge. So I'm trying to get these roads as close as I can. And for dropping that last little bit, it's just going to be kind of a trick. And it's not giving me a clean road guideline for this, no matter what tool I use. That is a pretty significant drop. Much more significant than I would hope that it is. It's happening a lot faster. So I think we're going to go back on this. And this is why you use dirt roads. You don't have to feel bad about changing things. And then we will mirror this and we're not wed to this dirt road here so we can demolish it if we have to and we've come to our magic number of 12 units to get this down to the ground level and now we can make a nice connection up to our dirt highway <laughs> all right so i'm feeling a lot better about that i'm still not feeling good about this but uh might have to deal with that so eventually my goal is to sink this and i think that we're gonna have to really rethink the riding stables luckily this is a dirt road so i can just move it temporarily we're gonna so call this the height of realism and uh just do some do some things that maybe aren't entirely reasonable and i keep hitting that budget button so what i want to do now is i want to start my sinking so we're going to use the shift terrain and I'll take the middle and I'm just going to tap this. One, two, three. And now let's pull that along. And that is about what I was hoping. We'll, we, we have to reconstruct this road anyway, so we'll, we'll cross that bridge when it comes. 
and we are going to slope down. So we'll right mouse click up here to our top slope, come a little ways away and slope down. And now we should be able to come straight down into our new sunken highway area. So we're going to need to maintain this height and we're going to come, we're going to actually create a tunnel under this corner potentially. We'll see. I'd prefer not to if we don't, if we don't have to. Either way, this entire project is incredibly expensive. What are you going to do? Okay, so we're going to turn this just a little bit so we don't run into that main gate. And we'll use our freeform tool to line that up. I'm going to pause this for just a moment as we sever our access to the park. And then we'll continue to bring this along. I think we are going to change the park. We're going to steal some of the park for the highway, which, oh... I'm sorry, Lee. <laughs> Here I am just destroying your beautiful park. And then again, free form to make our way around this edge. Ooh, and we got some lumpies and bumpies there. That's no good. And that was all because of that little dirt road there. We, we're gonna have a lot of reconstruction work to do. And then again, pulling this out as we work to bring this road up. And we'll again pull this up. Now it's really helpful when you're doing this to build both sides together because then you won't lose your road guidelines. You can see it just pulls me in. And with this, you can see that these roads are parallel because we have that one tile in between. It was two, and then it's been a pretty consistent one. So it looks pretty good. So we could raise this up, and I think that once we get past the park, we're probably going to, but we'll, we'll, we'll stay underground, or not underground, but under the ground, I guess, a little bit longer. Now for this, I really want to turn on my road guidelines because we've done so much with them. And I tried to mirror the train tracks here and then I'll use my guideline to mirror the road. Now it's a nice gentle slope up. We need to reestablish our connection in here. And this is going to be a bit of a trick. I want to make sure that we're getting our highway constructed so that we don't run into any surprises down the line. So. This should be in the opposite direction, and now we should be able to make our connection across. I'll use the final road that I would use here because this is going to be a very tricky junction if it lets me make it at all. So this is the trouble. <laughs> Before, this is kind of coming in at an angle, and I don't have the luxury of using the same angle that it had before. But if I turn on nothing, basically, just allow myself a little bit of free movement, maybe I can make this work. And I don't think that any crossings here are going to be deemed acceptable because of the rail. We may actually need to dip the rail down here, which would never happen in a million years. But I don't think that we can accomplish this highway without it. And it's due to game limitations. So I'm going to take some liberties here and we will sink this down. Truthfully, this would have looked really neat going down the center. And that's certainly another option that you could do. But sinking this down will at least give us the ability to put this in and then cross it. And I'm going to turn on all of my snap twos here and then follow what the pattern looks like on the side uh, with, with the, the, the tiles. That should be a pretty good indicator in terms of where I turned. There we go. Nice, nicely lined up, very significant transportation corridor at this point. So we're going to have to, this is, this is really going to dominate life on this side of the city. But that's okay. You have those sorts of corridors and they're very important and you maintain them, especially rail corridors. So now we've got this going. Let's see if we can finally make it across here. I feel like it's possible. I feel like We've certainly lost the, the serenity of <laughs> Nature Park to a certain extent, but, you know, it, uh, it, it, it unfortunately happens. And very simple to make this connection now. We are going to give it its own connection that's not at all related to the old connection. And then let's see if we can give this a little bit of space over here. We can give it some. And I think this is an opportunity to bring this back here and maybe we get our riding stables way back here now this is this is some steep terrain we're gonna need to 
put in a side road here and hope probably should have looked at the terrain first didn't do that and as a result are going to need to work around the mistake and what we're going to do is just pull that back a little bit there we go that's that's much easier to work with so this was a very significant project not for the faint of heart this is probably one that you know if you saw it you might you go oh i don't know if i want to do this uh, especially there's a, there's just so many uh, challenges but do know that on most major infrastructure projects this is one of many challenges that comes up the, the, these are not easy projects and they take years significant coordination and uh, a lot of a lot of heartache <laughs> truthfully to, to get done so let's f fix up some of what we have going on here with our with our fencing and we'll pull this around and it's snapping to the grid I really don't want to I don't want to snap to road guidelines I kind of want to follow this line that we have for uh, for our zoning it, it, it makes a very nice line along the hill I think it's compelling we'll keep it and so this highway turned I'm almost thinking that that wasn't the right idea. And I think we're going to straighten that out a bit. It's going to waste some land, so to speak. Uh, but I, I think it's the right choice. So we're going to... I added that little line there so I could re-square up my nodes. And now you see it's going straight instead of going at that curve. We'll just pull it out here. Now this is probably a place where it would be good to raise this up so that we could get an exit underneath here. We're building the highway new, so maybe that wouldn't be the, the absolute height of realism, but we're going to go for it. Future exit right here. And that's not well lined up. Let's fix that. Okay, I was pretty quiet there because I was using my road guidelines to figure out exactly where to put this. I highly encourage you to use your road guidelines. They are the very one of the very most powerful tools in the game. And if you're not using them, you're really missing out on the ability to create symmetry. Now they can get messy. I will be the first to admit that. But when they work, look at that, perfect. And I got a nice bridge here as a result. I can continue this road going up this way. So this gives us the opportunity to maybe develop some light industrial along here, along this corridor. And we need to find a way to, to line up with this. There's not going to be a way for a while. So this is going to be a dead end highway. So we'll pull this out. We could terminate it right in through these rocks <laughs> into, into this road here. Not ideal. Uh, truthfully, I'd like to get a connection. We want to have a, a, a decent spacing in between this junction, so probably right here. So really where it's lining up is, is pretty ideal. It's going to give us decent junction spacing. It's maybe a little closer than we would prefer. Um, we remember all the backups we had here, but it's, it's not as bad as it could be. So um, we will live with it. I'm going to start it running now. We're in a place where that's possible. And we'll, we're going to fix these water pipes that are just doing some things. We'll keep this one. It's a historic water pipe going underneath the right of way. And we'll need to add some sort of power across the highway to, to, so that we can make a connection here. Not ideal. Not ideal at all. <laughs> uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll clean that up a little bit. And I believe that our connection here is disconnected, which is really problematic because that's our power. So you can raise your power lines and we're gonna do that. You can step it up or down. And there we go. These are probably gonna be inadvertently demolished as we create an interchange here in the future, but that uh, for the time being, it's definitely necessary. Let's get our roads upgraded. And it looks like we got a little bit tighter here than I had hoped to at the end. Yeah, we can't upgrade that. That is problematic. We also, it, there would have been value in Potentially flattening this, it's okay. I've looked at the terrain here quite a bit. 
particularly this hill. I think we're going to. So we'll, we'll come from here. And let's flatten this area out. That's a little bit of... Uh, that's extreme. That's just not on an interstate going to happen. And that's what we are going to consider this. Too much fill. We need to dump it somewhere. Alright, so let's fill this in. That seems like a logical dumping ground. There we go. That's, that is significantly better, not from an environmental perspective, but from a, a highway perspective. If you want this highway to be good, this is a way to do it. And good is really planner language. <laughs> if you want this to be an effective highway that is safe, uh, that has good visibility, you want to make sure that uh, your 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 site makes sense, that you're you're able to see across some of those hills and, and not be surprised as you're going up and down them. There we go. Already broke it. <laughs> uh, just as I predicted, it happened. All right, so we now we now have this great highway to nowhere. Uh, so we're gonna terminate it. We'll just turn it into a collector to to tee off into this road. We'll have an interchange here. We'll have an interchange here. We could probably have another one somewhere over here and then a system level interchange right here in the future. For the time being, we are going to sever this and bring a temporary collector in. And these roads, these temporary roads do happen from time to time. And they end up, you know, it ends up being something where you say, yep, it's going to be temporary and then it lasts for 50 years. Uh, you, you can even see this on major interstates. Uh, there are a few of these in LA. The, the LA freeway system for as, for as epic as it is, is not complete. <laughs> so uh, you can see that there are some stubs there that just kind of terminate into local roads. And at one point, the intent was for those to terminate into, into highways. And that just never happened. All right, so we've got this going over here. We could have done a better job with this hill too, but we'll just, we'll deal with a little bit of imperfection there. And this is not gonna be acceptable. We're gonna need to do something better here. So we're gonna use our slope terrain tool, pick our high slope and bring this straight up and run out of our ability to drop soil. Ooh, that's gonna be a problem because we need to get rid of this. So let's fill in a bit back here. And it, to me, makes the most sense when you're, when you're dumping fill, you, you do it close to the job site, if you can. There we go, it's not perfect, but it's, it's certainly better than it was. And now we will run a collector up here. We could run a, a, an, an arterial too if we wanted, but it tees into a collector. So to me, it just doesn't make a ton of sense. Also thinking about the game mechanics, two lane roads makes perfect sense to tee these. Or four lane roads, two lanes in each direction, makes sense to, to maintain our number of lanes. Now this will be imperfect in vanilla. It's going to have us do a, a left-hand turn there to whip a Yui. You can throw that in there to make it make it work a little bit better. I'm just going to leave it and accept a little bit of vanilla wonkiness. And we will uh, ignore that. <laughs> if we had a, a traffic manager and if we had a few other things, we could do something more about that. But we don't have that available to us right now. So now we have this road which is basically an expressway <laughs> from this industrial district over here. I wouldn't imagine this dude does much. In fact, we can take a look. There are a surprising number of trips occurring on that already. That's crazy. Would not have expected that, uh, but it is, it is happening. So we will uh, facilitate. We're also going to build just a small interchange right here. Nothing dramatic, nothing extravagant. We, we can create basic interchanges that work just fine. Not like that, though. <laughs> and what we're going to do is we'll take this. I'm going to go up 440. Line this right up. And it's about a looks like it's about a tile there. Yeah, that's perfect. 
and then we'll just use our, our curved road tool and go right into the bridge. And now we can upgrade this and we'll be good to go. Now this local road that we have here is a collector, even though it looks like a local road. So we are going to need to be mindful of the fact that that road might need to be upgraded in the future. We also probably shouldn't leave a dirt road segment right there. Not ideal. <laughs> uh, this has a signal. We should go up and down this collector here because there are signals up and down it that shouldn't be there. We set this as the priority road and then we should be able to change all of our junctions going up and down here. That's better. That is much better. That will smooth traffic out there. And hopefully this will pull some of our freight into here. You already see it's doing some work. And I'm curious, we'll look at our junctions again. Look at that, all the traffic coming off that collector and onto this highway. So that is, that is great. We have one more place where I wanna build an interchange. We are running a bit lower on time in this episode than I thought we were going to though. So I might save this for the next one because I do want to get one more green cities thing in here. And that is the Central Park and some of the special buildings that we have. So the Central Park in particular is very, very large. So if we go and take a look, it is in our level, let's see, four, five, six buildings. <laughs> Uh, and it's going to take a really significant chunk of land. So if I were to place this, like just right anywhere that it lets me place it, it'll let me place it in some places that don't make any sense. And you'll see that it just sinks into the ground like that looks absolutely terrible. So you do need to do a very good job of terraforming around this one. So we'll leave it there for the time being. We're gonna add a local road because we're gonna put it over here and plan for future development. This is not the center of anything, but it's the center of our hearts. <laughs> so <laughs> we are going to, we're going to, we're going to live with it being right here. And then we just need to, to use some fairly extreme terraforming if it'll let us. So we'll raise it over here and lower it over here. Raise it over here, lower it over here. All right, so that should be enough to, to get us to be able to place this. And you see that now that we've placed it on a relatively flat area, it's really nice. Now, I love this asset with, uh, you know, like the, the circus, or the circus, the uh, concerts DLC pack. I think that you can create a really nice festival area if you combine the two. Don't forget to connect up your roads and one of the things that's really neat about this particular asset is that you can connect up to many of these uh, many of these pads through here as well. You can make this look different than the asset intended for it to look. The asset creator, that is. And that's that flexibility is really special. So we could hop in here and link up and create our own edge to this. So let's say we wanted to grab some of the other assets from this DLC pack. We could say Burden Behaven. Let's drop that in. We'll integrate that into the park. So we'll get rid of that connection. We'll, we'll, we'll fix that up in a second. The other thing that is in here, uh, the Climate Research Station, that doesn't really fit here. We could have the Lungs of the City. Uh, maybe we'll skip that one. I uh, The Lungs of the City, we're going to add that one. But I want to add that over in Lee's Park, if we can. We don't have any roads back there, so that's going to be a challenge. Maybe we, we'll, let, let's see how awkward it looks here. Problem is they have a bunch of redwoods, and it's next to what I believe is spruces, so it just doesn't really fit well. To me, this asset looks like it belongs in a campground. An exceptionally large park with huge trees. I wouldn't call it exceptionally large, <laughs> but I guess we all have our own definitions. So uh, what's large to you might not be large to me, vice versa. So one of the fun things that we could do here, so we could certainly link up these paths and we're going to do that. But the other thing we can do, we have like the climate research station is you could add in a pedestrian connection. So these don't line up perfectly, and this is where mods like Bob really come in handy because you could change this. But 
it does make for a really unique vanilla experience. So we've got this here, these linked together. We could change the trees, we could mirror the trees. So that's what I'm gonna do. Let's get rid of all the landscaping through here. At least the big stuff, we'll get rid of the big stuff. And then we'll take this down and let's just soften this a bit. Soften that terrain. And what I wanna do through here, first get rid of the things that make this feel like it's un, yeah, I guess just kind of unkept. And now I want to look at the trees. So we're going to pop in here and I'm just going to pull the trees side by side. They're using these assets that came with this game. So is that the same one? That is. So it's an alder actually. So we could come through here. We don't need to, to, to spam the alders in the same way that they are in the central park, but we could certainly have a dense outline of alders and then mix it up in our own way. And maybe we do want it to blend in. We want it to just look like it's a part of this. And we decide, let's just do it. Let's go for it. Let's fill it in. That's what we're going to do. Let's see if we can make it look the same. We've got a missing trail connection here that we've got. We've got to make that. We can't leave that. We'll let the trails change to dirt trails over here. I'm okay with that. Actually, I'm not okay with that. We're going to upgrade these. That's another tip. You can upgrade trails just like their roads. That is no problem. Unfortunately, you can't do it within the asset, but that's to be expected. Let's get our power connection made over here before I forget about it. It's temporary, so we will be a little messy with it. We'll get some water pipes underneath the roads here. And let's finish off our landscaping. Get distracted. And let's rename this. We'll name this Cheeseman Park. In honor of, ah, uh, what, uh, drop that, there we go. No, 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 well, the Cheeseman. So, in honor of Denver and the cheese neighborhood that is now gone, that we, we, we never speak of, the neighborhood that does not exist. <laughs> there we go, we get some water in the park. And we've got this fairly remote park, but we're gonna spur some development in this area as a result of this. It's a really unique amenity, and when we take a look at it now, you can see that it really blends well. It feels organic. It feels like it fits because we mirrored the tree pattern there as best as we could. I think it looks really, really spectacular. And we could have done more here. We could add a community pool, we could add basketball courts, jungle gyms, but I just wanted to get something down on the ground quickly, and we can always work to expand these things later down the line. Uh, we, we have signals here. We could take those away too. Not really warranted there. And uh, I'm curious what we're looking at. Traffic. Whoa! 77. That is brutal. I don't know what. Ah, I do know what. So we have siphoned all the downtown traffic to this highway. They love it. But we have this issue here. We are going to solve this. So generally railroad companies would not be very cooperative, but this is likely a safety issue. They get really cooperative when safety gets involved. They don't want to be liable for an accident. So we will say that the, uh, the uh, railroad, we have a cooperative railroad here. So that in and of itself is going to help quite a bit. The other thing that could help here is some asymmetric roads. So there we go, that should help out quite a bit. That got our traffic up to 79. And over here, it's just all of the vehicles are now coming down this way because we, we have our combustion engine van. I'm gonna lift that here. We'll take that off so that we aren't funneling traffic. We finally de cul de sac this area only to make it a traffic mess. So let's get rid of this policy from this road also going to get rid of this kind of one last windmill over here disrupting those residential properties actually we will keep it on this road it's a local residential street it is very direct we don't want that to be a cut through for highway traffic and you see it here they're just all lining up so we don't have a dual left-hand turn here, which is really unfortunate because it makes a ton of sense. So 
we are going to just upgrade this to be an arterial right here. And that will give us dual left-hand turn lanes. I'm wondering if we just take it all the way back. Yeah, that gives us our dual lefts there as well. So I don't like it, but I think it does it does work. And look at that. They just uh, This is one of those things that is really challenging in the vanilla game. You just get a, a line of traffic all trying to make a left. And they all stay in one lane. We ignore that center lane. We all go in the one lane. This may get better with time. I'm going to speed it up and see if this improves. And you see it's not improving at all. Everyone wants to use that road. We will upgrade this just to see if that helps. And this is where playing the game gets dangerous. Because you can start to, to, to trick yourself into thinking that this is a good idea. It's really not. Uh, truthfully, I probably need some sort of interchange to end this. And I don't have that right now. So I probably need to bring this highway all the way up here and have a proper interchange to make this work. We're going to save that for the next one, but I will try to make this look a little bit more reasonable for the time being. It's not functioning appropriately and it's just not going to. Who am I kidding? We can't save this for the next one because there's a really easy solution. So I, I gave this some thought for about two minutes after I finished recording. And the real problem here is that we're prioritizing this collector over this arteria. So we're just gonna solve this quickly. So I'm gonna delete part of this and we are going to prioritize this movement. Now this is not a permanent long-term solution, but it is a good short-term solution. So I just changed the dominant movement through here. Now I will leave it here to uh, I guess to, to respond to the game mechanics. The other thing we could do is a roundabout. Maybe we'll do that. Okay, so this with one other change, a stop sign here. So now you can get off the highway and quickly get around here. So I'm gonna speed this up and see what happens. We'll look at our traffic. And I should actually upgrade this to be three lanes on this side and over here. Lane Mathematics, shout out to Biffa. And here we go. Look at the traffic. We're at 82. We have a smooth flow around here. Now that did change our transit routes, but at least we're getting the cars off the highway effectively. There's a little bit of slowdown. You have that rubber banding, you know, when there's a traffic jam and it lasts for some time. So that's why you can feel an accident that occurred an hour ago. If you're on the highway, there's that rubber banding effect. It takes a long time to clear and the game simulates that well. That said, this will improve and we'll have a heavy traffic flow here, but it won't be a catastrophic traffic flow like we had before. So things are improving. And over here, you know, this is still, this is kind of a mess right here. We're going to need to do some more. Uh, that said, I think that we're in a significantly better spot than I was about to leave this in. Uh, at least now I can feel a little bit more comfortable with this. I'm not, I'm not perfect. There are certainly things we could do. Here's another one. Give ourselves two lanes to, to back up into. We could even upgrade this since we are in upgrade in the upgrade mode right now and have a full on arterial here to make that connection so that we can have some separation between the lefts and the rights. Not that there are many lefts right here, but it'll function pretty well. And considering it's backing up all the way onto the ramp, that's not the worst move in the world. Now over here, look at this. We've cleared up traffic flow at 84 again, 83. And we've got congestion down in this tourism area. You know what? Not all congestion's bad. We're gonna take this congestion. Con this congestion. So this is where we're going to leave it. Uh, I hope that you like this. If you did, hit the like button. If you aren't subscribed, please consider doing so. And hit the notification bell if you want to know when I release new videos. In the next uh, bit of this series, we're going to mix it up and introduce the Airports DLC. Very excited for that. Uh, but that means that we're not going to have a Trattoria, Ultimate Beginner, the Ultimate Beginner's, Beginner's Guide to the City Skylines next week. We're going to have something different, maybe uh, some Timberborn, maybe some Flycorp, something different. And uh, 
I'm looking forward to bringing that to you. I hope that you've enjoyed this. Stay tuned for this brief city tour. Take care. Bye-bye.